Well, hello and welcome to Living in the Light of Eternity. This is just a series of shows um, that I want to do and I sort of had to take some time off, so sorry about that. Um, I know there's probably people that have tuned in to listen and I wasn't, or to watch, and I wasn't here. And uh, hopefully you can hear me. I don't know if I'm streaming properly. I've had a little bit of difficulty with Ustream and I'm not sure why. It was working great and now it seems to be um, giving me a little bit of trouble when I'm trying to do, uh, trying to to stream live as well as as to uh, record. So thanks for being here. My name is Laurie Smith, and I'm a I'm just a student of God's Word, and I just wanted to do these shows really just to share my testimony, my my faith, my um, my love of God's Word, and my love for God, and my love for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And I just wanted to share some studies that I'm kind of working on in my own personal walk and so that's mainly what these shows are about living in the light of eternity you can go back and look at the introduction um, on the uh, the first video there on YouTube um, or on uh, the Weebly site that I created for these videos and um, we've already gone through quite a bit of the introduction but we're working on looking at Christian character traits and that's where we left off and so I'm going to click over here to my sword searcher and bring that up and these char Christian character traits came from a website that is really good it's a uh, discipleship tools www.discipleshiptools.org I believe that's what it is or dot, dot org let me see if I can bring that up here yeah that's what it is it's www.discipleshiptools.org and um, Richard Kreacher he's put together some great information for anybody who's interested in going and checking it out and these Christian character traits I mean we started looking at these there's so many that he's listed here with the scripture references and I mean if we try to cover them all it would take us a while <laughs> because we just got started and uh, when I, I actually had to skip some shows uh, my husband is um, he came from the ho home from the hospital in um, April and he had been there for two and a half months and he's terminally ill and he's in stage liver disease and He's by the by the grace and the hand of God. He's still here, and um, he was in the hospital for two and a half months. So I started doing these shows while he was in the hospital, and then he came home, and I was doing some more shows. But then he ended up back in the hospital with some more complications. He fell, and uh, we thought he broke his uh, 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 his shoulder or or rib or something because his back was really killing him. And he's got um, he's got serious back problems. So he's uh, he's 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 in good shape. He came, he came from from the hospital. He's home again. And uh, but so I decided now to do some shows. So it's been a while since I've actually done some shows, but I know where we left off because I keep track of all this. <laughs> and um, and I I know it, you know I appreciate everybody who's tuning in. This has been, it's like uh it doesn't matter what the situation is. I just want to share God's word. And sometimes I can't make the show, and I'm really sorry and apologize. <laughs> but I just I have to I want to keep going in it because I love to do this and I love to study this for my own personal walk with the Lord. And living in the light of eternity is so important to me because I'm always expecting and waiting for the Lord to come. And I'm a believer who, uh, you might want to call me, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of sitting in sort of closer to, um, oh, like I believe the Bible is literal. Um, I believe that when Jesus said he's, he's made a place for us and he's coming again, I believe that he's coming. And I believe that um, I'm sort of a, you might, you might want to call me a premillennialist pre and also a dispensationalist. I, choose, I tend to lean towards the, that teaching and those teachings. And, but there is some false teaching out there about dispensationalism. So you have to be careful before you judge dispensationalism because there's, I've actually heard some really false statements made by several teachers who don't really understand what dispensationalism is. So until you understand it, you don't want to be judging and so um, you know I believe that Jesus is coming and I wait I wait for him every day and I'm like you know I, I used to not pray this prayer because I kind of feel like maybe I shouldn't be praying this prayer but you know like come Lord Jesus come because what that means when the Lord comes is sure I mean we're I believe in the rapture and I believe that I'm gonna be raptured out that's great hallelujah I'm not gonna see the tribulation I believe that and um, others may not but I that's what I believe and um, so the second coming um, when when Jesus comes back he's gonna come to rule and reign and he's gonna come to judge and he's coming not 
as he came, you know, meek and humble, you know, in the form of, of a man, you know, born of the Virgin Mary and the Holy Spirit. He's coming as the almighty judge. And he's this. So when we when we pray, come Lord Jesus, I mean, what it means is it's great for us. Hallelujah. Because I'm saved. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. But there's many that are not saved. And so really what we're, I think really what my prayer should be is, um, Lord, help help all of us to share your love so that those who will be saved and who, who you would call your own children would come into the come into the to the body the body of Christ because you know I I know that God's will and God's plan will come about and regardless of what our prayers are I don't believe that God is you can you can't manipulate God he's got his plan set he set them before he set the world in motion. Before he set all this in motion. He already had the plan. And so I just pray for God's will. You know. But I'm still looking, I'm looking all the time for the Lord to return because I'm excited about it. I don't know if he'll return while I'm still still here in this earth suit or if God will call me home first. But either way, either way living in the light of eternity is kind of like redeeming the time. Jesus said, redeem the time. I mean, it's like, you know, we're to be um it's not like a works righteousness type thing. What it is is to conform to His image, you know. And we are to be like the apostle said, you know, to be to to put on Christ, because that's the only way that God, that the love of God and God and the Holy Spirit can work through us, is if we actually submit our whole selves and put on Christ and put off the flesh and put off the worldly lusts, you know, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the you know, the the pride of life. Put off the old sin nature, like the Apostle Paul was talking about and it's you know it makes sense to me because these things that we're talking about here which is you know love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness right gentleness self-control these 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 character traits that we're to exhibit are really these are godly character traits I mean they don't come from the devil not real love false love does Everything that's anti, everything that's false, you know, that goes against God, and that goes against God's nature, would be from the devil. Joy, not false joy, real joy, that comes from God. True peace can only come, peace is only from God, amen. Patience, that's where we left off. And um, so we're going to pick up with these, but there's so many, I mean, he's listed, this is from Richard Kreitcher, um, K-R-E-J-C-I-R, -E Dr. Richard J. Kreitcher from Discipleship Tools. And you can go there and check that out. That is a great web website, discipleshiptools.org. There's tons of studies on there. And I just ran across it, just searching out some of this stuff. And I had never seen it before. And I was like really excited about it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get right into this and going to continue to study. So I just pray that God would just open up our eyes, open up our ears, our spiritual eyes, our, our spiritual ears. and open up our heart to receive his word to to receive what it is that he would have us to to learn his truths they would sink down into our heart they would not just be head knowledge or something that we read and just put away and that God would allow this with the help of the Holy Spirit you know that this might change us to change me that I can be changed and conformed more and more into the image of his dear son, Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And then he and, and then in doing so, be in submission, allow God to work through me, to share and to show the love of God to others, you know, who so really need to know the truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that people shared God's love with me in the past. And you know, it's I'm forever grateful. I know there were people praying for me before I was born again and um I used to hate it because I wasn't born again, and I didn't. I was not seeking God. I wasn't seeking God's ways, and um, so I didn't appreciate these prayers. And now that I'm born again, I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, praise God for those people that prayed me in because I am thankful. And um, so, yeah, this is you know we are to to be an empty vessel for God's use, and in doing so, we have to empty ourselves so that God can fill us up with his nature, with his righteousness, his goodness, his mercy, compassion, loving kindness. And so these are great lessons for us all, and especially for me. 
because I'm coming from a behind the eight ball a little bit. <laughs> Got a late start. And so I'm trying to move from milk to meat. And I can't do it on my own. I know that. It's got to be the help of the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit, the guidance, you know, to lead me on that true path, you know, and to to help me to to put on Christ every day. You know, so we'll pick up where we left off. We left off with, uh, we covered a joy, peace, and patience. We left off actually at patience. And Richard Kreischer says, patience is showing tolerance and fortitude to others and even accepting difficult situations from them and, and God without making demands and conditions. So that would be true patience. Not just being patient, like one well, patiently waiting for to win the lottery or, you know, <laughs> what most people would think patience is. Um, being patient, you know, I want that big house, but I'll be patient for it. It's not that kind of patience, you know. It's showing tolerance and fortitude to others and even accepting difficult situations from them and God without making demands and conditions. That's difficult. Accepting difficult situations from people. Showing tolerance and fortitude. This is an area that I seriously need to work in. And, you know, I need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help me in this area. This is something that I really need help in. And it's good to do these because it does show you, like, wow, I, I, I'm really honest with myself. I try to be anyway. I'm probably not as honest as God would show me, you know what I mean? But I, I'm pretty good about seeing where I need help and, and what I need to change to be, to, to be acceptable, you know, to be, to be in right standing with God. And um, that's an area that I need to work on. Because not patience, like, oh, I'm patient, you know, for many things. But when it comes to accepting difficult situations from, from, from other people, you know, who, are, who might be misusing me, mistreating me, uh, just not treating me right, not saying what I want to hear from them, uh, not showing me any kind of real, maybe any kindness or whatever, how patient am I with those people, right? This is something that all of us need to work on, I think, and especially me. <clears throat> so they reference Matthew twenty seven fourteen. And this is um, this is Jesus, and when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. This is towards the end of this is just before this is sort of the the trial, you know, the the the, the false trial, I guess you want to call it, that was held. Um, that wasn't really a legal trial, and that said then then said Pilate unto him, verse thirteen, hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee, and and this is Jesus, and he answered him to answered him to never a word in so much that the governor marveled greatly Jesus didn't say anything even after all the accusations and all the false claims and all the false you know testimony from false witnesses were brought to that mock trial that they had at night um, when they were trying Jesus after they went and got him and, and you know took him from the Garden of Gethsemane and uh, brought him into custody and they you know it's like he didn't say a word he just, he just took it. It's not that he couldn't. It's just that he didn't want to go against God's will. So this is where, this is what they're saying here. So patience is showing tolerance and fortitude to others, even accepting difficult situations from them and God, without making demands and conditions. Kind of like Job, you know. What do you think about Job? You know, Job. You know, he, I mean, he struggled. That's for sure. But he didn't sin, and he didn't, he didn't sin with his lips. He was, he was a righteous man. That's what God said. Have you seen my servant Job? Righteous and upright man. I mean, how many people could God say that about here on the earth besides Jesus? You know, not very many. So he must have been pretty good. You know, and it's like he, he took it. He, he took it and he endured it. And at the end he said, I'm just going to shut my mouth. I'm not saying a word. And that's what I need to learn how to do too sometimes, I think, too. Uh, Romans 12, 12, um, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. That's the Apostle Paul. Yeah, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Patient in tribulation. How hard is that? We all know that's very difficult. If we have no trust and no faith that God can deliver us, or even that, even if you do, even, like, like the, uh, like in the book of Daniel, you know, with, uh, 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 Shadrach and Abednego, Abednego uh, when they were in the, f the fiery furnace, and they said, well, 
We know that our God can deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we're still going to serve the living God, the one true God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's, you know, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. So even in our trials and in our tribulation, that's where the true test of faith comes in. It's real easy to trust God, and it's real easy to have faith when things are going great. You know, when things are going wonderful, bills are being paid, roof over our house, you know, over our head. Uh, great things happening in our lives, maybe, you know, job promotion or um, health seems to be good, lots of money in the bank. I mean, for so many people around the world, that's not the case, but in North America, that's most of the case. And it's like, you know, when something goes wrong, it's like all of a sudden the rug's pulled out from under you and it's like, where's your faith? Where's our faith? Where's our, our trust in God? And many times we get angry and, you know, we think, why God, why me? Only God knows that answer. Why us? Why why he allows these things to happen? And why he doesn't always deliver? You know, I mean, for every prayer that's been ever said over somebody who's been sick, you know, with cancer or some sort of disease, I just say cancer because it seems like such a bad thing. Everybody's got it nowadays. Um, you know, it's, it's terrible. You know, I mean, we prayed for my sister. She died of cancer. And she was not delivered from cancer. Now, I prayed for my husband, Cecil, and he was delivered from cancer. Was, you know, it's like some people would say, well, maybe this person had more faith than the other person, or this person said the magic words, right? It's like, no, I don't believe that's it. I think what we need to do is worship God and serve God even, even down in the pits and the dust. You know, a lot of the Psalms talk about that where, where David writes, you know, even if I go to the dust, you know, what, what, what good is it? I can't, how am I going to worship you if I'm in the dirt? But the truth be, wherever God wants us to be, we just keep serving and worshiping Him. Hallelujah. And that's what I decided, you know, a few years back. Well, I mean, I've only been born again since May 2007, May 22nd, 2007. But shortly after that, I realized that I thought, you know, uh, wherever God wants to take me, if that's to my some sort of horrible, tragic end, I'm going to praise God. And I'm going to worship Him for eternity. Because I'm going to go live and, and, and be with my maker for eternity. God the Father, oh hallelujah. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I'm so excited about this. So it's like, you know, yeah, but in the meantime, where's, we, we do need to trust God in those tough times. That's, that's the hard part. It's easy to trust when things are going great. Oh, God's just blessed me so much, you know. And then something goes wrong and it's like, oh my God, you know, why is not God hearing my prayer? Well, how do you know he's not hearing your prayer? You might be hearing all of our prayers. I think God can do all things. So God can hear them all if he wanted to. And I, I believe that sometimes he doesn't deliver. I've seen it so many times. And I just choose to trust that God's plan is the is, is, is it's the way that it has to be. Because God is sovereign. We're not sovereign. The devil thinks he's sovereign. But he's on his way down to the pits of the lake of fire, you know, to be destroyed and to be completely wiped out but uh, he thinks he's got some power but he doesn't have any any power no God is sovereign hallelujah and I just praise and worship the Lord hallelujah they they, they reference James 1 3 and uh, verse 12 knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience and that's that's true and then uh, verse 12 blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath prom promised to them that love him and so, yeah, I mean, we just got to give it up to God, you know, and pray, you know, seek Him and seek His will. And then when things just don't work out the way that we think they should, keep on praising Him and keep on thanking Him for everything. Right? It's very, it, it's just awesome. I'm so, so thankful to be on this side of the cross and so thankful to be on this side of salvation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because I was, I was so lost, you know. The next one they list is Kindness. Kindness is practicing benevolence and a loving attitude towards others. And they reference practicing benevolence and a loving attitude towards others. Kindness. I always think I'm a kind person, but I'm not necessarily the most kindest person in the world, you know. And I, I, lo I love kind people, you know. And when I meet somebody who's kind or somebody talks to me who's very kind, it makes me cry. Literally, like, tears will come to my eyes because... I recognize their heart and I see how kind they are and how 
No, that gives you, when people treat you with kindness like that, it actually, it, it shows you dignity, and that's, that's, the, that's, that's from being image bearers of God, you know. That's the only way you get that dignity is because it comes from God. And it's, it, when I see people that are kind, you know, and actually show people such compassion and kindness, you know, this loving attitude towards others, it, it literally brings tears to my eyes because there's, because the world is so full of evil and hatred and unkindness and, and horrible things. And I'm not able to shut that out. Like some people can live with rose-colored glasses, you know, and just pretend it's all great and fairy tales and fairy dust and whatever. Um, I just see the misery and the suffering and the the evil intent in people's hearts, you know. And it's like, when I meet somebody who's truly, genuinely kind, it just literally brings tears to my eyes because I'm like, oh, God bless you, man, you know, for, for allowing that, which can only come from God, to show through. And it, it reminds me to try to be more kind myself, you know, and treat people with dignity and to treat people the way that I want to be treated, right? It's very important. Um, goodness is the next one, displays integrity, honesty, compassion to others, and allows us to do the right thing. Goodness displays integrity, honesty, compassion to others, and allows us to do the right thing. Matthew 19, 16, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? In verse 17, Jesus, and, and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And, um, Goodness only comes from God. Amen. Anything that is good and anything that is right, truth, you know, like they're talking here, honesty, integrity, compassion, that comes from God. It's rooted, it, it definitely, I mean, how could it come from anything else, anyone else than God? That's, that's a God character trait because God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, like, this is just it. This is this is it. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are character traits we should possess. What, you know, when we're putting on Christ and we're allowing the Holy Spirit to move through us, we need to show these character traits to the world because how else is the world going to know if we look like the world we're not we're not we're not doing any good you know we need to stand out in the crowd as as the, the ones who have true peace the ones who have patience to endure stuff that most people wouldn't be able to tolerate kindness towards people even those that would hurt us and those that that haven't treated us right kindness goodness you know honesty, integrity, compassion to others, taking a back seat, you know, letting somebody else have the, have the better seat, and letting somebody else get a little bit ahead of you. These are the things that, you know, we should be doing. It's not, it's not about me, 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 get, 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 what can I get? You know, it's, it's about what can I do for somebody else? What can I do, and not in my own strength, and not in my own will or ability but what could I what could I do by becoming an empty vessel and allowing God to move through me to do what he wants me to do for somebody else you know that's to me that's that's the best possible outcome for my life that could ever happen is if if God was truly moving through me and I was doing his will even if I didn't even know it to help someone that he wanted to have help in a certain way even if I didn't know it and it was accomplished and then afterwards when I get to go to be with him he explained it that would be the very best to help somebody out because there's that goes against the world system helping people out <laughs> it totally goes against what the world says is the right thing to do the world says forget the person on the street who needs help forget that person over there who needs help that's somebody else's problem God says no that's it's your problem you know it's really something you know and I mean I just praise God for those people out there who do help people thank God for them 
Faithfulness is the next one. Faithfulness is the gluing fruit, gluing, like quote unquote, gluing fruit that will preserve our faith and other characters of the Spirit as well as identify God's will so we can be dependable and trusting to God and others. It's the glue, faithfulness is the gluing fruit. <laughs> That's funny how he wrote that. That will preserve our faith and the other characters of the Spirit as well as identify God's will so we can be dependable and trusting to God and others. Well, faith, I mean, you know, faith is, 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 is believing in something that you can't see, something that, that, that hasn't come about yet, but, but yet is and will, having faith. It's like I have faith and trust that what Jesus said is true and that he is preparing a place for me in heaven and that I am part of his body, the bride of Christ, hallelujah, here on the earth, and that he's preparing a banquet, a, a, a wedding feast. People say, oh, that's just literary stuff. I don't believe that. <clears throat> I don't. Just like Jesus went to the cross and he died on the cross, that wasn't literary, you know, some sort of literary analogy either. That's real, honest-to-God truth. And I tell you, he's going to prepare a banquet wedding feast for us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The bridegroom is coming. I'm so excited. So uh, faithfulness, I mean, that's very... You know, it goes back to having faith, you know, and, and it all kind of works together, patience and faith. And, you know, like Jesus kept asking the, the, his disciples, you know, where do where owe you little faith? Where's your faith? You know, it's like we got to have faith. We have to have faith. That's trust. Faith and trust, I think, work. Like I said, we can be dependable and trusting to God. I don't think that God has to trust us. What's God going to trust us with anything? He obviously can't trust us. That's why he had to send his son to die on the cross <laughs> to, to bring us back into right standing because he can't trust any of us. Probably, we, we need to trust him. He's the only one that can deliver on his promises. And without him, we can't deliver on anything. So he's doing all the work, really. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Gentleness is a character trait that will show calmness, personal care, tenderness, and meeting the needs of others. Gentleness is a common, it's a trait that, you know, some people have. It just seems like they're just born with it, just gentle people. I've met some gentle people in my lifetime, not very many. Um, I'm not a gentle person at all. I'm kind of like a buffalo in a, you know, I guess in a china shop, you know, glass breaking. I'm kind of a clumsy type person. Like, I'm just kind of not gentle, but I'm gentle in nature, like, as far as that goes, like, my heart is gentle. I have a very gentle heart. That's why it breaks very easily. And when it comes to people and my real feelings about people, they're, I guess, I do have a gentle heart towards people because I really do care about people. And, um, you know, even people that I, most people wouldn't even think about I care about, you know. Like, I go through the world all the time just going around the globe and I think about the people in Africa and I care about those people. And I care about them all. I don't even know who they are. And I'm like, I care about those people. I don't want terrible things to happen to them. I mean, I just go around the whole world, all the different countries, even the countries where that are enemies of God, and, and because most of them are, unfortunately. But there are people within that are part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. But there's a huge chunk that aren't, and I just pray for those people. I do care about people. And um, that's maybe where my gentleness kind of shows up, is the fact that I really do care about people, and I don't like to see bad things happen to anybody. I don't care who it is you know and so but my nature doesn't appear to be gentle I'm a, I think it's just probably the way that I had to grow up and had to be tough you know and had to had to show that I was tough and I could make it right and I think the only reason I made it here today is God got me here hallelujah it was none of my own doing and I, I truly believe that it was God the whole the whole way otherwise I probably wouldn't have made it and um, self-control will allow us to have discipline and restraint with obedience to God and others. First Thessalonians uh, 5.22 Self-control, this is another one, will allow us to have discipline and restraint with obedience to God and others. Now that's a big issue for us because the flesh is always fighting against that. Because we can't really control ourselves. Like That's the problem, self-control. It's a huge issue. It's like self-control, so try to control the tongue. Try to control the flesh. You know? Can we do it on our own? I don't believe that we can. I think there'd be people that would argue and say that we can. Maybe somebody who's a little bit more knowledgeable about things in the Bible than I am. But I would think that it has to be the Holy Spirit. And it really has to come from God. We need God's strength to overcome. We need God's strength to... In other words, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. 
you know, to, we need God's control. Because it's obviously self, anything self, doesn't work so well in God's plan. So, self-control is like, we have no self-control. We, we really just need to trust God and be, be obedient to His Word. And, first of all, in order to do that, we got to know His Word. And we need to um, do what He said in His Word. You know, and that's not easy to do. Because if, if we're not focused on it all the time, we get off, I'm sure, throughout the day, most people do, and get off track. And we need to then repent and get back on track. I have a huge problem with discipline, and I have a huge problem with submission, because I, and, I, and I talk about it all the time on my stuff, and I mean, for anybody who's survived abuse, um, especially child abuse I'm talking about, I have a serious problem with discipline and a serious problem with submission. And I think probably the issue is, is you know, when you're beaten like a dog, you know, and practically killed it, physical abuse, sexual abuse, you don't want to submit to anybody. You know, it's like, why would I want to submit to somebody? I've, you know, I've already been a dog on the ground, you know, in submission, being beaten and abused, you know. For me, discipline and, and submission is just not, it's not something I, I, I choose to want to do. And God, I need to be obedient to God, and I need to submit to God. And I had to submit in the first place, praise God. May 22nd, 2007, I realized that I needed to to submit in order to be saved. You know, Now I need to submit my will and my choices, my life to Him, you know, in every area. And this, I think well, some people think they're doing it because they might have like this idea that they're perfect or something, they've already arrived or something. I, I don't think anybody's really doing it. I think that we all want to. I think that we all want to be obedient to God. <laughs> and I think that we all, we do. We want we want to, but our flesh says no. And the flesh says, no, I want to do what I want to do. You know, and our will says, oh, but I want to do what I want to do. You know? So, it's a huge problem. I think for everybody. And I just, I'm just like, oh, Lord, you've got to help me with this. You know, I know I can't do it in my own strength. And I have to have the help of the Holy Spirit to, to try to learn to become more and more trusting of what it is that he wants me to do to either let go of or to stop doing or to to give up or whatever it may be. I don't even think it's, it is that stuff. I think it's just trusting God and not being interested in things of the flesh, you know, and not being interested in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. It's not about what it's not about what what, what am I going to get? What about me anymore? You know, it's about God and what He wants me to do. And so these are huge issues. So we've covered now the first section of this, and um, I don't know how much more we want to do, but we did love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And those are just some of the Christian character traits. He's got more biblical fruits here. He says, he says we will be studying these characteristics along with the Galatian fruits in the book of Matthews in our online Bible study. So if you go to that website, discipleshiptools.org, and you can pull up that website. There's some great studies on there. Like for instance, there's there's for more 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 character traits: forgiving, humility, fairness, courage, friendship, honesty and truthfulness, dependable, gratitude, responsibility. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, contentment, generosity, confidence, uh, uh, wisdom, compassion, um, diligence, thoughtfulness, efficient. I mean, he just goes on and on. They really took this study to the to the hundredth degree, and it just goes on and on. It's it's just more and more and more. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll, we'll keep going on a few of them. I don't know if we'll look at them all, but we'll go through and pick some out that I think are important for... Well, they're all important, but we'll, we'll look at them. And um, and we'll talk about them, because these are so important. So, Living in Light of Eternity, this is just the beginning part of this uh, study that I want to do. This is just the introduction to it. It's actually going to be much different than this. This is just an introduction to it. And why I wanted to look at it is because... In uh, in Peter's epistle, he's in Second uh, Peter chapter three. He says, "Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be at all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things." Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Now when I read that, I thought, well, 
what, uh, what manner of person ought I to be in all holy conversation and godliness? And I thought, I really need help in this area, and I need to get started on it now. And so thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, I'm going to try to do this show. I'm actually try. I'm, I'm just praying that the Lord would just help me to sink this into a slot and keep it there. And, um, you know, if he wants me to do it and continue on with it, then he'll provide. Amen. God bless you all. God keep you until the next time. You know, I just pray, like, if you're struggling, you're having a hard time, and you just can't figure out you know, what you're going to do, how you're going to make it through another night, another day. I'm telling you, you get some help, reach out, you know, call the crisis line, do not suffer on your own, and call. you reach out to, for God. You know, I used to run from God, and then now I run to Him, and I, and I started running too. Thank God, you know, um, he, you know, call out, call, call upon His name. He's listening and he's there. And I, people would say, oh, that's just bogus. No, it's not. It's true. Because I was down at my very lowest rock bottom level of, of just despair and giving up. And God met me right there. He was with me in that valley. And so he's with you too. So, you know, if you're having a hard time and you're struggling, you make sure you reach out and get some help and all, you know, some other help from people that you trust that are trustworthy and call upon the Lord. Amen. And don't do this alone. God bless and God keep you till the next time. Bye-bye.